Hi, it's Michael Siggins, and I'm here with Mark Ingebretson, Editor-in-Chief of Robotics Trends. Mark, how are you today? I'm doing well, thank you, Michael. So, Mark, we've really seen robots uh, move to the forefront in the past year. Uh, we've seen robots perform some pretty daring feats in some very dangerous environments. Uh, it's been a good year for robots, but unfortunately, it's come at the expense of some human lives and the environment. Uh, we've seen just about a year ago the BP oil spill with a tremendous toll in both lives and also environmental damage. And more recently, we've seen the tsunami and the earthquake off of Japan not only wreak havoc, a uh, large loss of life there, but a, a large nuclear disaster still unfolding as we, even, as we record this today. But in both of those situations, uh, really the world got to see robots performing some pretty daring feats and going into some dangerous uh, areas and actually uh, but, but playing a vital role, not only with the oil spill and helping to plug that after several weeks of hard work, but in, with the nuclear uh, reactor situation in Japan, going into some very dangerous situations there to bring equipment, to take readings, and so forth. I'd love to pick your brain a little bit today about the role that these robots are playing, not only today, but in the past, and maybe look forward a little bit, too. So, Mark, what, what are your thoughts? Well, I think the, uh, the worst of times actually brings out the best in um, what robots are able to do for people. Uh, robots have always been, if you think about it, kind of an extension of um, our own senses, our own presence in an area. And uh, that, that actually began, I think, with some of the robots that NASA sent to Mars or the moon to, uh, to explore there. What, um, what occurs then is that you have a device that's able to perceive what's happening and, um, and is able to navigate and, and show people back either on Earth or in a safe location um, what's occurring. Now, the same thing happened with the oil spill. You had uh, more than a mile beneath the ocean. It's impossible for humans to go, but of course you have robots that are able to, um, to navigate there. And if it weren't for robots, the oil would still be gushing out. Similarly, robots were used to monitor uh, the amount of oil that spilled out, where that oil was located, and um, just sped up the cleanup of the Gulf uh, tremendously. The same thing, in a sense, happened in Japan, where you had, um, particularly with the uh, Fukushima reactor, you had robots able to navigate into the facility in a place that humans could never go uh, without severe harm to their health. So these robots were the first responders in a sense. They went in and they could judge what the damage was and they could allow the engineers and technicians uh, to understand what needed to be done to, um, to, to correct the situation. Okay, now I think a lot of the world may have been seeing robots play such an important role for the first time, but this isn't really necessarily something new. Robots have been hard at work and really in these dangerous environments for quite some time. Is that right? Um, well, certainly, yeah. And I, as I said, I think it all began with the, the space program, where the space is about as harsh an environment as you can imagine and as alien an environment to uh, uh, people like ourselves. So robots uh, in space, the technology that was used to allow them to, um, to explore places like Mars was integral to uh, their helping in areas like uh, the Fukushima reactor in Japan. Okay, and then uh, again, we, we, we look the last year again has been sort of a, uh, really has, has elevated, I think, or shined a, more of a spotlight on robotics in these situations. Uh, unfortunately, it's been tied to such tragedy. And I, when we look ahead, it seems like we'll, uh, we, we can do our best to prepare for these events. We always can't avoid them, but do you see that uh, what's gone on the last year, it's allowed the robotics industry to really learn a lot, and so we can build sort of better equipped robots or better equipped teams to deal with emergencies, and do you see robots playing a bigger role in those? I certainly do. I think that uh, if you look at the costs associated with something like uh, the Gulf oil spill or a, um, a radiation leakage as occurred in Japan, you see that it's well worthwhile to uh, train, uh, to program robots so that they can be better at responding to these disasters. Uh, this would not only save lives, but it would save money and it would get um, these uh, problems fixed a lot, a lot sooner. Okay, great. 
And Mark, I know you, you put together some uh, great informational um, content on our website uh, talking about not only the BP oil spill from last year, but also some things that robots are being used in dangerous uh, spots now, including the uh, nuclear power plant in Japan. Where can folks find that if they want to find out more information about that? Well, they should go to our website, uh, roboticstrends.com. Uh, very soon we will have an article about uh, the robotic response to the Gulf oil spill, which uh, was ongoing a year ago and, and took quite a bit of time. Uh, there'll be uh, a headliner, some kind of direction on the home page that people will be able to follow to read those, uh, those articles. In addition, we're going to have um, a piece in the upcoming uh, print newsletter we produce, uh, Robotics Trends, and this will detail um, just how robots did respond to uh, the tragedy in Japan. Uh, we'll be able to, uh, we have a, a reporter on the ground who uh, was actually on the site and uh, is an expert in Japanese robotics who'll be producing this for us. All right, great. Hey, Mark, well, thanks very much for uh, taking some time with us and giving us a little look back at robotics in dangerous situations and talking about the content on roboticstrends.com. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Michael, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk about it and um, look forward to speaking with you again.